What is up guys welcome back to the channel my name is Ryan your DIY guy if you're new here welcome go ahead like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of this exciting content of course go ahead and follow us on Instagram we'll get VIP access to this content before YouTube in this series we're gonna be creating a cozy couple seater complete with metal fire pit from Mega Master and in part two we're going to be decking out the floors with a few concrete patio pavers as well as some water wise plants so you're going to want to stick around right until the end coming up next on nail and screw first up was sketching out a layout directly on the ground just to locate where we'll need to construct our seater and fire pit and we aim to locate the seater directly in front of that water feature you see in the front over there and the seat itself is about two meters wide in a circular shape and our fire pit is about 1.5 meters wide in a rectangular shape and we made sure to give enough space to walk around the fire pit as well as the seater and of course we brought out the metal fire pit itself just to locate it and make sure that we're providing for adequate space around it so here you can see we've got some stakes going into the ground that blue stake is the smack bang center of the entire area and this just helps us keep our bearings when we start excavating the other stake that's going in now is the center of the fire pit so that we can draw off equidistant measurements on either side and know that we're still on the money and align to our water feature And yeah, before the comments go wild, we did actually excavate a smiley face in my client's backyard. But anyway, <laughs> we forged on because that's what she wanted. And so we got ahead uh, with our foundations. We dug our foundations about 15 to 20 centimeters down and excavated smoothly along all the edges, just so that the concrete could settle and be quite solid when we laid down. And then of course we could go ahead and lay down all of our concrete mixture this was the heart of winter because of course when it started freezing our clients started screaming and asking for their fire pits immediately and so we obviously came to the rescue but it was in the heart of winter so we needed to get this down so it had enough time to cure out overnight so we can get along with the build this is the excavated area for the fire pit and you can see we've left some of the earth in the center albeit uh, not a lot uh, and that's so that we can ensure adequate drainage through the fire pit down into the earth and here we're simply laying down the concrete and then we will shake it so that we can get all the cream coming to the top and it can dry uh, securely and for that we use a straight edge which does a great job of raising the cream to the top. Once the concrete foundation sets up, we can go ahead and prepare all of our materials so that they are close at hand to the job site. And that just means laying them out quite uh, nicely and ready for the build. And then we can go ahead and mark a circular line using that stake that we had earlier and our tape measure just to get a visual reference to make the construction a bit easier. And while we were at it, we decided to pop our name in the concrete. And here is our roller course going down and this just provides a solid foundational surface for the rest of the build to go up. And 
and as you can see the build is going smoothly from the foundation all the way up to the halfway mark which is about 500 millimeters or about half a meter in height and that's a comfortable sitting distance once we reach that height we can go ahead and prepare our lintels which will create our seating area And what we're doing is laying it out roughly just to get an overall length because it's semicircular the lengths will differ and so we lay each of them next to each other and mark out on the other side where we'll need to cut and then of course we can go ahead with the concrete grinder or grinding wheel and cut off where we need to trim on the other side Now, if you want to see a complete tool review on this Makita grinder, well, go ahead and click the link that you see popping up now, or just go ahead to the channel and go take a look at one of the tool reviews in our playlist. Once all the lintels are cut to size, we can go ahead and secure them with some water in our seating area before we can go ahead and construct the top half of our seater, which will be another 500 millimeters to give a total height of one meter. Every second or third course we do place a bit of brick force which acts a bit like rebar in a concrete foundation and just secures each of the layers given that it's just a two brick layer of the wall that's here this adds a tremendous amount of strength for the long term. And once the concrete seater is built, we can go ahead and turn our attention to the fire pit, which I will set on time lapse because it's pretty straightforward. So enjoy.
And there you have it, the build work or construction of the C10 fire pit are now complete. So we can allow that mortar to cure up overnight because this is at the end of the day. We'll come back tomorrow and start with the plaster work. But we did add a, another layer in the center of that fire pit just to make it one level because we figured that looked a bit better. And in fact, it did. <laughs> we also filled in the cavities on either side with crushed gravel, as you see here. This not only fills that void, but also retains the heat that's given off by the fire pit. So it makes it warmer for longer, which is pretty cool. And thereafter, we can go ahead and start plastering on the top and all around that fire pit. We've already started with some of the plaster work on the seater, as you can see on the back here. This is the first application of the plaster, and we're allowing it to set up a little bit before we start with what we call cutting, which uses a metal C-channel just to trim off the excess plaster before we go ahead and float it with a wooden float, which is basically a hand trowel, and that just smooths it off to give the final texture, which will be a smooth plaster finish. We've also plastered at the bottom and of course the back of the seater and the seater itself where your bum will be. <laughs> so that is what's going down and we are almost at the finish line. This is how it turned out when the plaster work was completely done. It is now just curing out. This is a Friday afternoon and you can see the sun is playing with us, but it's good because it'll have the entire weekend to dry out before Monday when we come back and start preparing it for painting. Now you can see there's some rough texture still on the plaster where we had to finish and touch up, but we'll allow that to dry out and come back and sand it down and scrape off any excess before we start with our primer application and then our paint, which is pretty cool. You'll have to wait for part two to see how it actually turned out, so I'm not gonna let anything slip away. But having said that, make sure you give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube can recommend it to other people who might wanna watch this kind of content as well. Also go ahead and subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so when we post part two, you get notified first. And of course, go ahead and follow us on Instagram where you'll be able to catch this kind of content upfront first as a VIP. And of course, we'll catch you next time on Nail & Screw.